Hello and welcome to On Your Lane. This is the best place for ambitious people who are taking charge of their lives, making that income, making that impact, and living fulfilling lives. And today we're talking about the power of confidence. Yep, this is a game changer, I believe, in everybody's life because confidence is also about how you come across to people and what you demand from life. Eh? Life will not just serve you because you're nice, you know? Okay, this is not a good example, but that's what I'm thinking about right now. I was listening to this guy preaching and he was talking about how people when getting married you could be a virgin and you just expect because i was a virgin i deserve a good man and you should treat me right like you think the virginity is a crown on your head and so now you just deserve good things to come and it was like nope you can be you have kept yourself you're a virgin and you get married and then you can find the worst husband and have the worst marriage it's not guaranteed life will give you what you demand so you were not a virgin because you're nice and everything and now everything will just come to you no you still have to make choices. And confidence is that, is that thing that helps you make the right choices. It, it's that thing that makes you make a demand. Because no matter how good you are, you can just say, I am good. I, I, I do everything well and everything. And so things will just come to me. No, because most of the times what happens is when people see you and see your potential, and then they see your mindset and see, oh, this person thinks they're not good enough, most people will take advantage, right? And abuse you and misuse you and just, overuse you beyond what they are rewarding you for. So confidence is that thing that helps you walk into rooms that you might not even qualify for, but get more than what you deserve because you see your value and you present yourself that way. So even if you qualified for a job, you might lose it. You might not even get it. Even if you qualified for a contract, you might not get it. Why? Because of that confidence issue. So confidence is a very important thing because it affects not just your career, not just the money you make, it affects your relationships, it affects every faculty of your life, the kind of boss you're going to be, the kind of parent you're going to be. You know, sometimes you work for a boss and you know this boss is not confident, so they just do everything to sabotage other people because they feel uh, unstable in their role. Their attitude is salty and therefore they can't advance. You actually know my boss, can never get promoted because of their attitude and their lack of confidence. It makes them act in certain ways that makes them repel the blessings that they're seeking. So today, I hope through this episode, you will build the confidence that you need, not just in one area, but in all aspects of your life so that you can attain and demand from life the things that you rightfully deserve and achieve the things that you desire. So the first thing is confidence is tied to your identity, how you see yourself. I like giving an example of a person who is very valuable. Have you met those people where you are like, this person is so amazing at what they do, but every time you're dealing with them, they are looking down on themselves. They will not be promoted by accident. They will not be admired or celebrated by accident. People just take advantage of it. So the identity, how you see yourself, affects so much in your life. Therefore, you have to work on your identity. Who are you? What do you carry? Why do you think you're still breathing today? You think it's just accidental? You think it's accidental that when you see something, you think in a certain series of thoughts that are different from the way I think? No. Therefore, you should always know that when you have a seat at a table, you carry something of value. It might be different from me. Maybe you, you're not good at writing, but maybe you're good at speaking. Maybe not even good at speaking, but good at anal analysis. Maybe not good at analysis, maybe good at people's skills. Everybody carries something and nobody carries everything. And if you begin to celebrate what you carry and not compare it or compete with it or demean it, then you will start to improve your self-identity. You will start to improve how you see yourself. And therefore, you don't let everybody just come and play around with you and leave you, play around with your vision, play around with your dream, play around with you in your relationship and leave you because you start to see, I might not be Miss World or something but I am miss something, you know, I carry something different that is valuable. So your identity, how you see yourself is worth tweaking, is worth revisiting so that you can begin to see yourself with somebody who carries value. You begin to understand that your, your breathing today is not just like power. God is just like, hey, let her breathe. Because God sees that they can do something valuable and meaningful in this life. And actually, just the fact that there's nobody else like you, 
Like even if we wanted to make somebody like you, we wouldn't. You know, you are different. So you will always bring value to the places you go to because there's nobody who is exactly like you who's coming to do what you would exactly do. So that identity piece is something that you have to intentionally cultivate. What is your identity? How do you see yourself? How you carry yourself? That ties directly to the confidence that you carry. The other thing is you have to know where you are right now, okay? And the gaps that exist towards where you want to be. Sometimes we can just think intelligence and ability is just like bottled up. You know how we think it, it can be changed, it can't grow. And I think that is a mindset that comes from maybe traditional school systems where you are a C student and that's the expectation from you. Everybody thinks you can't become an A plus student. Like that's it. Your intelligence is the way it is. It can't improve. That's not true. We can all improve. We can all change. So wherever you are right now, and if you realize that hey, my identity is messed up because I don't have confidence in my IT skills, even though I'm an IT personnel, I would want to continue working in this field, but my skill set is not like that top person. You can improve. Nobody is just solid. You can stretch. You'll be surprised what you can achieve with practice. If you are persistent and you identify the gaps to say, okay, in my field or in my relationship, in my marriage, in my friendships, these are the issues. In my faith, I don't understand this. I don't understand that. How can I understand it, right? How can I build my capacity in those areas? That self-improvement, that personal development will build your confidence, right? No gaps are permanent unless you want them to be. Even a person who says, I know nothing about cooking. Give them two months and teach them how to cook a little bit every day, a little bit every day. They can become chefs, top chefs in two months. And they didn't know anything about cooking because nobody is just bottled up. We are skilled. We have the capacity to understand new things and to stretch ourselves, to develop new skills and apply them and become valuable in our different spaces. And when you know that and run with it, even when you go into a meeting today and you feel like, oh my goodness, I'm the dumbest person in this room, you can actually attach yourself to the smartest person in that room and learn from them. And you'll be surprised the capacity that you have. You can actually go on Google, YouTube classes, free stuff, where you just go and learn and learn and learn and you'll be surprised. Next time you're in that meeting, you know what you're talking about. You're not as dumb as you were before. But sometimes we think it's just the way it is. I'm just the way I am. And there's nothing that I can do about it. And that is a dampening thing on your confidence. And it will really, really repel the opportunities and the success that you rightfully, rightfully deserve. So let's talk about how to build your confidence. We're getting practical here so that you can intentionally take charge. You can carry yourself differently. You can be confident in your body, no matter what weight you are at. You can be confident in your field, in your relationships. Confidence is needed everywhere. Nobody wants to connect with a person who has no confidence unless they don't have confidence and they just want to sit there and complain about it. But we love to have people that bring a positive energy and optimistic energy solutions and those are people who carry confidence. Even if you have a solution and you're looking down, actually I remember going to this interview. The guy who I was competing with for that job, it was a very good job, was more equipped at that role than I was. I knew it. I knew him. We had worked together before but we had a difference i could speak loudly clearly with a smile i could answer questions and he couldn't every time i was making a presentation he would like lean into the board like really lean in and speak in a low voice so as much as he was smarter and he knew the stuff he was a better accountant than i was he just couldn't express himself very well and i knew that that would be annoying to whoever is asking questions you're asking a clear question you're like tell us about it and the person is writing tiny things on a board that the interview needed us to write and make a presentation. He wrote really tiny things on the board and he was speaking in a really low voice and I was like, oh my goodness, no. Not even because I was competing with him, but I just thought that is not going to sell anything. And people, you could see how people were agitated because people wanted somebody to lead, right? Somebody to express themselves and I could hear him and I was like, oh no, that's not gonna work. I got the job, I really did. And honestly, if you were going to rate me in the ability for that role specifically, he was way better than me. He was good at it. He loved the analysis stuff. I didn't. I was just qualified and I spoke with confidence and it allowed me to get the job. Power of confidence. We need it in every aspect of our lives, right? You can pray all you want, but after you're prayed, you need to take steps. And if you're like, yeah, I can't take steps, you're shy, you're not confident in your ability, then, then nothing. You just sit with your ability and your potential and you just say, I could have, I would have been. I could have been, but there'll be nothing to show for it. So let's talk about how to build this confidence. 
Number one is know your worth. Know your worth. Your worth is not debatable. It's not like you go to a diamond and start to say, maybe you're not that worth, you're not worth all this. No, a diamond is a diamond. That's what it is, right? You are worth so much. You are. You know, I like to mention the intricacies of you as a being. What is happening in your brain right now? What is happening in your heart? What is happening in your ears? What is happening at your foot? What is happening in your leg? There's so many complicated processes happening to keep you alive today. And that's not for no reason. That's not just random. You are valuable. And nobody else is like you. Nobody else thinks like you. And you might think, yes, but that means nothing. It means something. It means God thought this world needs this specific breed of a person. And so you should understand your worth. If you don't, nobody will. If you don't work for you, like understanding your worth, like take care of you and say, you know what, I'll dress myself right. I'll treat myself right. I'll speak to myself right. Then nobody else will treat you better than you. You will just open yourself up to abuse. Like we like to speak nicely to other people. Like there's no way you just meet somebody in the street and say, oh, you're ugly. But you, you're so quick to say that about yourself in the mirror. Mean to yourself. And that being mean to yourself will show in your attitude, in how you see yourself. It will reflect because that means internally you do not see yourself as worthy of anything. And out of the abundance of your heart, out of the abundance of your thoughts about yourself, you will act. And everybody can smell it. Even the scavengers, the ones that want to take advantage, will smell it. Like, hey, this one we can take advantage of. So know your worth, add tax, and act that way. The second thing is you have to understand life and its seasons. We like to compare a lot, and that is a big dumper on your confidence, right? Because people are going to different places. You meet somebody who is on chapter 40 of their lives and you're on chapter three, and somehow you're like, I'm not achieving what they're achieving, and that dampens you. Like, as a mother, I know that process where you are nine months pregnant, you don't look like that person with a six pack, a girl that's got a figure, and you look at yourself and say, I'm so ugly, look at them. Since you're building a human, you're manufacturing your whole being, it's different. And so you're hurting your confidence, you're hurting yourself, comparing in an unfair way. No one will compare that. Nobody will compare somebody who's nine months pregnant to somebody who is like 16 and never been pregnant. You know, nobody will do that. Nobody will compare a person who has 20 years experience in business with somebody who has just started their business. But we do that. And we feel like, well, we, we should match up. We should be there. It doesn't work that way. Now, when you understand life and its seasons, you'll be able to see somebody who's looking better than you, who's doing better than you, and say, oh, wow, how do you do that? Have you had kids before? Oh, okay. And you can learn from them. And then you can actually improve yourself. But if you're always comparing, you're always in competition. And the people who you're supposed to learn from, you meet them and you start fighting them. You know, somebody has come, God has sent somebody to mentor you, and you're there, and you're like trying to stop them because you're competing with them. So understand life and its seasons and be cool with your season. And understand that I made a choice. Like when you're pregnant, for example, for me, I've chosen to be pregnant. I want to have a child. So all of a sudden, I can't want to not have a child anymore. Now this comes with a specific journey. Now I have a child, I'm busy, I have no time to put makeup on, my child is not sleeping. I shouldn't compare myself to a woman whose baby just sleeps all night. The baby sleeps and they don't even understand. My baby just breastfeeds and sleeps. And there I am, I'm like, I, I need to up my game. No, you're gonna kill yourself. And you're going to, in that moment, put yourself down and reduce your worth, your self-worth. And that is not right, okay? So life comes in seasons and you are in your own lane. Understand that you're not competing with anybody. There's nobody in your race, right? There might be another lane doing somewhere, something else, but you're in your own. And where they're ending at is not where you're ending at. So be okay, just focusing on your space and saying, you know what, I'll be the best I can with what I've been given. I was talking to V the other day, and V, we were talking about how sometimes you're like, oh no, sometimes people are mean, why are they saying this to you? I'm like, it's easy for people to break you if you're already fragile. You know, so don't let yourself be that fragile that you're putting yourself at the mercy of people. Where if they just say a word, you're blown away and you're broken and you're down, you're like, oh no, you look ugly. No, build yourself up. Understand that, okay, I am the way I am right now because I'm going through what I'm going through and I'll get better for it. I'll just keep going, right? Understand life and its seasons. And I think the next point ties up to that because I've, I've alluded to it already, like 
refrain from competition and comparison. Social media doesn't help us with that. But again, you shouldn't expect social media to be managing your life. You're the manager of your life. So social media wants your attention and it will give it to you. And then there are things that are trending, the things that everybody desires. So a, a cute couple will be trending. A successful traveling couple will be trending. And these things will be put in your face. And you'll be like, ah, I'm not achieving. We should travel too. We should also be trending. My husband and I should do dances together. Like these people are doing dances. You don't know how they've been practicing all day because their husband doesn't work again. She doesn't work again. And your husband is working all day and you're like, oh no, cool, because we're not doing these cool dances on social media and stuff like that. Don't compare, don't compete. And for me, it's editing my social. My feed has to just cut out what I want to do in my life, okay? And if I find myself triggered by your tall building, which you're building, or by your lifestyle, I'm going to say, okay, respectively, I wish you all the best, but I'm going to just stop seeing this a lot because it's producing things in me that I don't like. Not because I'm like, oh no, I just have to look at it. So I don't, I'm not jealous. No, just take care of yourself. In this season, you're being triggered by it. Don't see it then. Just excuse yourself from that and then say at a different stage i'll be able to clap and look at it and say oh, that's good but in the meantime i don't be real with yourself and walk away from that we can't compete if we're on different things it's like a fish is like okay let's compete with a bird how how are you going to compete the bird is going to fly and the fish is going to do this and say who won nobody wins in that kind of rest okay so run your own rest please and guard your eyes Okay, my points are just tangling in. I just said guard your eyes, but the next point is guard your heart. You have to guard it because there are going to be these distractions that are going to come. They just are. Life is just like that. You know, you're just going to tell yourself right now, that like, I'm going to focus on my degree. I want to get my degree because I want this. And then there'll be something that just comes right there. It's like, okay, now let's focus on travel. This is going to be a year of travel. You're like, I just said I'll focus on my degree. Things will always want your attention. Things will always want to grab and take and take and take and take. And it's up to you to decide what comes in. I know I meet people and they sit down and they say, hey, in this life, everybody's just negative. And I'm like, which everybody? You know, even on Twitter, people are like, oh, Twitter is just toxic. I'm like, I love Twitter. I love Twitter. Your Twitter is different from my Twitter. Why is it different? Because you are not guarding, right? You are not removing and editing what you see. You're just like letting everything in. To take a view, like a, a bouncer on a door, when a bouncer stands, means that people are going to try to get in. You don't put a bouncer on a door because people are going to say, respectfully, can we get in? And you say no, and they'll walk away. No, the bouncer stands there because they know there'll be people who will be like, I'm getting in, whether you like, whether you don't want. And the bouncer says no, and they're defending that. That's what you should do with your mind. Because things will come to want to plant things, gossip, lies, fear, doubt, things that you don't even need in your life. They're just going to come, and you have to stand there and say, I'm guarding it. Because all these little things, fear, doubt, and everything, are going to eat into your confidence. And they're going to affect how you show up tomorrow or how you show up in your relationship. You know how sometimes you watch a show and all of a sudden you call your spouse and you're like, are you cheating on me? <laughs> and it's like, what is happening? Because you saw a show where there was these talks relationships where he was cheating with his cousin, but also cheating with his secretary, but also cheating with his sister. And you're like, you can't hang out with your sister like that. <laughs> what? what is that coming from? Got it your mind so that you are confident showing up in all these different places with a clear attitude clear mind and the last thing that will help you build your confidence is keep working on you there is something about working on you that just boosts your confidence really i was saying that even if you're overweight and you're trying to lose weight and if you run one day and eat one healthy meal you already feel like you know what i'm killing it there's something about improving yourself that is just positive right so don't feel stuck like sometimes you might say, oh, my spouse wants me to cook for them. I feel like incapable. I'm not good at cooking. Or they want me to run this household. Or they want me to manage this business. I'm not good at it. If you keep thinking that way, you're just having a closed mindset and you'll be stuck. But you could say, okay, how can I start today? Or who can I work with today that helps me do better in this area? Self-improvement, intentional improvement just lifts your spirit and allows you to prosper even as you're improving yourself, to enjoy the process even as you're getting better. Right? So I hope this was helpful for you. I hope you go through these steps and see one thing that you can implement in your life that will help you build your confidence. I hope you understand that confidence is not natural. That like, oh, I'm just born confident. No, we cultivate it. And you'll be thrown in different situations that will question your confidence. But if you're willing to grow and learn, you'll be surprised how you can rise to the occasion because you're capable, because you have that potential that just waits to be activated. If this was helpful, drop me a comment. Let me hear your thoughts. Like, share, subscribe so that we can continue to grow the community. And if you are looking to be confident and improve, 
a check out circle of greatness it's my flagship program that will help you in a big way there are links in the description box they will lead you to it so you can learn more about it otherwise thank you for joining me mavis tanjus of Anjata is my name you can find me across social reach out so that we can continue to connect over there i'll see you next week bye bye